My dear brothers and sisters, before we start in the upcoming weeks by examining excerpts of Dua Kumayr, let us briefly discuss the significance of Dua as we did last week. But now we will examine some actions that prevent our supplication from being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we pray, and we pray, but there's an obstacle, there's an impediment that's blocking our supplications from being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are some of these actions that prevent our supplications from being answered. In one hadith, the Imam السلام, explains some of them. In this hadith, the Imam says, Su'un niya yamna'u dua. Having ill intentions. This is not an external act. You're not doing anything on the outside. It's an intention in your heart. When Allah sees that I carry ill intentions towards other people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes will prevent my dua from being accepted. Su'un ni. We need to train ourselves. Sometimes when we see someone successful, when, see, when we see someone is blessed or gifted, in our, we may not say anything, we may not do anything, but in our heart, we carry ill intentions. We don't want that person to succeed. We carry hate towards a person. This will prevent our dua from being accepted. Allah wants us to supplicate to Him with a pure heart. With a heart that wants goodness for people, goodness for humanity. You know, we all claim that we want goodness for humanity. But with those whom we deal with on a regular basis, do we really feel that way towards them too? some friends, some family members, some community members, do we have good intentions towards them? You know, some scholars say, as they understand from many a hadith, that one of the sources of remorse, one of the greatest causes of regret and remorse on the day of judgment is that in our lives we did not carry good intentions too often. On the day of judgment, when you see the reward that God gave you just for making a good intention, you will regret not making more of these good intentions. And my dear brothers and sisters, making a good intention, does that cost you? What does that cost you? Making a good intention. Just wanting goodness for others. You hear about someone, they have a problem. In your heart, you want goodness from them. You know, this act is a good deed in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ The basis of all deeds is intentions. When you just make a good intention for someone, when you wish well for someone, that in itself is a good deed in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And really, there's no limit on how many good intentions you can make. How many good intentions can you make on a daily basis? 50, 100? 200, every few minutes, you can make a good intention towards someone. You wish something good for someone. That in itself is a good deed. To the contrary, carrying ill intentions towards other people is a source that blocks our dua. So this is one thing that the Imam السلام, mentions. The second thing that the Imam mentions in this hadith, and this is something many people in the community struggle with, especially in the winter when the days are short and people have jobs, delaying the salah until it is qada. Some people think that's okay. I'll go back home at 6, I'll pray dhuhr and asr and maghrib and isha. All four at once, easy. Delaying the salah until sunset is a major, major sin. And the imam says one of the reasons why one's dua is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because of delaying prayers until they are qada, until the time expires. There's nothing more important than our prayers, my dear brothers and sisters. And believe me, you can always do something with your job. You can take five minutes, ten minutes. 
it just goes back to how serious I am about my acts of worship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, there's no job that will prevent you and deny you 10 minutes from worshiping your Lord. You can speak to your manager, to your boss, work out something. And if nothing works out, realize that your salah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sustains. The third that the Imam alayhi salam mentions is not paying charity and sadaqah on a regular basis. That delays our prayers from being answered. Sometimes that blocks our prayers and supplications from being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last one that I'll share with you in this hadith from the Imam alayhi salam. The Imam says one of the acts that block our prayers from being answered is using derogatory and profane language. Especially our dear youth need to pay attention to this. Oftentimes, in their gatherings, they may be just joking with one another, right? It's not like they're attacking one another. They may be just joking, having a good time, but they use profanity in their language. They use derogatory words. The hadith says the one who uses profane language, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sometimes not accept their dua. They're praying and supplicating, but Allah says that tongue which uses inappropriate words, which uses profane language is not qualified to make the supplication. This tongue that I use to worship Allah and ask Allah must be pure, must be purified. Using profane Language contaminates the tongue, my dear brothers and sisters. I know for a lot of people, it's just a natural habit to say words that are inappropriate, especially when you're with those whom you feel comfortable with, with close friends, some family members. This is not acceptable in the religion of Islam. Using any profane words has a negative effect. One of those negative effects is that it blocks our dua from being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to remove all these impediments that block our prayers from being answered. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill all of our needs. All of us who have requests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our a'mal, to answer our prayers and to fulfill our hajat. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين الله صلى الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض حنيفا مسلما وما أنا من المشركين إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك ومرت وأنا من المسلمين الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين